this is out like a short background then about the topological optimization it's a methodology design the material then how to design solid also topic pattern model of macrostructure based materials then a numeric evaluation of my optimized design followed by example discussions so the background is about mechanical metal material. So when we're talking about metal materials, a lot of researchers say, no, what does that mean? Because metal materials originally refers to the concept in the area of electromagnetic metal materials. They need to achieve some unusual properties about like electromagnetism. But the mechanical metal material I'm talking here we bought the concept from electromagnetic metal material, but we use some parameters beyond that to represent some very extraordinary mechanical properties by rational design material. So, so far, the mechanical metal material is a new family of independent materials. So, right now, the mainstream mechanical metal material involves like an oxidic severe electron portion ratio, also negative thermal expansion metal materials, pattern model metal materials, or with another language, but fluidics with a vanishing shear modulus, material or hierarchical metal material, or regard in spot metal material, also like acoustic fluidics metal materials, or seismic elastic wave metal materials. If we look at uh, the things, you know, uh, the pictures at this side, this is some benchmark designs, macro architecture for those kinds of metal materials, mechanical metal materials, about the negative person ratio, super lot of it high performance macro architecture, also about acoustic metal materials pattern model metal materials, origami metal materials. So all those different mechanical metal materials. So if I just showed some designs from my research group or for some the other research groups, actually all the mechanical metal materials, they are euro extraordinary exotic um, properties, effective properties actually determined by four parameters. So that's way from uh, an engineering point of view. Those mechanical metal materials, they are mostly determined by four elastic constants, like Yass modulus, shear modulus, buck modulus, Poisson ratio. They're just a population of those very important fundamental elastic constants to make the metal, mechanical metal materials. They uh, can give us some unusual mechanical properties, surprise mechanical properties and behavior. Okay, so if we look at uh, this is a, a just a schematic thing uh, I used that. If we have a coordinate with shear modulus and fuck modulus, also we put the Poisson ratio here. That's a way to look when the po the effective Poisson ratio of a macrostructure close to 0 0.5. Those solid macrostructures, they will have a, a, an approximated properties, be able to mimic fluidic behavior. What does that mean? That means those solid macrostructures, they will give us a very, very high arc modulus, but relatively speaking, a very, very small shear modulus. But yet, they are solid structure, but they are able to mimic the behavior of fluidics, but they are not fluidics. They are solid macrostructure, soup lot with solid macrostructure. Okay, but when the person ratio, you know, effective person ratio of the macrostructure or unit cell, they come to negative. When they close to negative one, those materials they are the very low oxidic metal material with negative person ratio. Here, we need to be careful. When you're talking about lactic impulse ratio or, or vanishing shear modulus, it's not about the base material, but about the macro structure, the architecture. 
because of matter material properties normally determine the not not from the chemical composition of base material, but their artificially engineered structure architecture from their geometry and their architecture. This is give us a very, very good opportunity. We can based on commonly available base material like aluminum, copper, or other metallic or polymer base material. We using numeric design optimization method, we can develop a broad range of different materials, which means we have different microstructures. They give us different effective properties, but yet they are still based on common available base material like uh, steel, aluminum, copper, or plastic, like that. This is the main benefit. When the structure, microstructure architecture changed, their effective property will be different. In this way, we have very, very good opportunity to develop a range of different microarchitecture artificially engineered materials, but they are still based on common available material, base material, rather than we do not have to develop a new chemical composition for different materials, for different applications. This is, I think, the dominant motivation for research to investigate the artificial engineered microstructure-based materials. That's metal materials. Um, that's uh, when we come to black mold metal materials. That's we have two dominant or uh, description or definition. First is it's a new class of a three-dimensional isotropic solid mechanical metal materials. They are artificial in the end to have a, a euro elasticity property, such as a vanishing shear modulus, extremely large bulk modulus, but small shear modulus. Also, in mathematics, the path here used to indicate a phi. What does that mean, phi? Five for what? Five used to indicate five out of six components of a, di of a dialogized elasticity tensor. Their angle value, five are close to zero, but y is low. This is a, actually the essential definition for metal material. It doesn't matter your isotropic, elastropic, or isotropic metal materials. This is the original definition, essentially, to describe what is a path model metal material. So, uh, as I mentioned, they are used to mimic the behavior of fluidics, but are solid. Hard to compress, yet easily to deform, subject to some shape force. So, that is, our story is just from the elastic tensor. This is, uh, some research they're talking about path model, but they use, they use two-dimensional materials. The, because two dimensional materials of the elasticity tensor only give us three angle values. Actually, they are not part of model materials because the pipe doesn't have a clear meaning for two dimensional structures. But for three dimensional structures, that makes sense because we have six angle values, okay? Five of them are close to zero or nearly zero, but the y is low. Y is low. This is a the mathematical mechanics background of model metal materials. Um, that's, if we look, look back the history of model metal material, its original concept was mentioned by Milton, uh, Cheki, uh, Cheki, Cheki, in 1995. But the manufacture of such model three dimensional model material is after 17 years. Why? There is a reason. Why 17 years used to manufacture such metal material? Because the original metal material, they are based on rigid body, rigid body mechanism concept. All the story are start from, started from rigid body double cones. Okay, in this way, all the structure deformation, highly localized at the very port-like tiny tips. Okay, in this way, all the 
deformation or the bipartite model behavior of the microstructure is actually from the cheap collection of rigid body mechanism. In this way, you know, also another issue is when the cheap area is smaller, pattern model performance will be better, which demands the collection need to be small as much as possible, long as much as possible. Such microstructure will give us better pattern model performance. But because the design concept was originally based on rigid body in mechanism, those design or manufactured pattern model materials barely hard to be applied to real world applications because they are easily subject to fatigue breakage or easily damaged, you know, because the whole system is their rigid body, but only the chips are allowed to deform, allowed to deform. So this is uh, why the background of traditional design or traditional concept for pattern model material, metal materials. So another aspect is a perfect astropic pattern model material will have nearly zero shear modulus. Therefore, their effective Poisson ratio will be close to 0 0.5, but level over 0 0.5. So this astropic solid pattern material can be used to implement three-dimensional transformation of electrodynamics. They are quite similar to transformation optics in electromagnetic metal material. So those transformation can help us to achieve applications like acoustic clocking. Okay, make acoustic clocking devices. Also, because of this separate you know, the shear modulus and the back modulus. This has a very, very good protection, you know, just to guard waves, particularly for solar waves or something. They have a very, very good application because two waves, they are actually uncoupled, uncoupled. So uh, last tip is liquid behavior of perfect at model material can be approximated by the original design three demand a solid microstructure. So when we use solid microstructure to approximate the behavior of fluidics, those approximation is still making sense, still makes sense, okay? So this is the, the benchmark of pattern model materials. They have a, like a face sized cubic unit cell, okay? So after that, all the current design, benchmark designs, they are based on the FCC unit cell with rigid body collections. With rigid body collections. Look, this is the model metal materials. They actually are diamond type lattice structure. Oh, so this is a, about the current state of the art model materials based on diamond type lattice structures. Actually, they are face centered cubic metal materials or microstructure architectures that, that's actually based on Brown's latch structure. Okay? So we know we have 14 different distinct ways to describe the different you know latch structure. That's 14 different Brown's latch structure architectures. So the pattern model metal material is actually an upgraded, you know, FCC face centered cubic brown lattice. They uh, make a diamond type of lattice structures. So another aspect is the diamond type lattice structure. Actually, they are in nature very, very good to supply the high capacity to withstand compression. This is the in nature. Diamond type of structure. They are very, has a very, very good capability to bear or withstand compression. Looks like this octet truss structure or octet truss based structure material. Look like that. So that's uh, about the background of the current state of the art pattern model material in design.
of, of course, the different designs, a lot of limited to the, the five mark two are showed in the previous slide, but at least about five, six different kinds of them. But they all based on the rigid board, I have to say, say lattice structure. But because they gave us a very good concept, but the application to the real world engineering is very limited. So they are very limited. In this way, just give me the one question. Is there a possibility we fully make use of the deformation of structure using the deformation from structure elasticity to achieve part model behavior rather than the highly localized deformation from a rigid body collection? Because rigid body collection gives us big trouble in manufacture, also in applications, because they are easy to break down. Okay, so that's the my research motivation to try to achieve a kind of a model material, making use of the overall deformation from the elasticity of the whole macro macrostructure. The potential application of path model material, they have a lot, but basically they have two very typical application is about acoustic clocking, also about elastical mechanical a finny clock. When we put something um, under this, like a black or something, we can't feel that. That's our finny. That's also kind of a clock. So those two applications actually based on the transformation of illustrial dynamics and the illustrial statics based on those two architectures. So this is a, you know, one application. It's a very straightforward application about um, a finny clock. This is about a acoustic clock to as an indication, as an indication. So once if I try to use structure overall, compliance or elasticity to develop a new type of path model material, what are my numerical design methodology? Actually, that's topological optimization. Topological optimization as indicated by this slide. It's a numerical design methodology, but a systematic numerical methodology based on finite animal analysis. Based on finite animal analysis, we can find the best material layout in the space to, to provide the best performance to pay loading. To pay loading. So the rest of the material with a very large contribution to the loading will be removed from design space. In this way, we can achieve a super lightweight microstructure, but high performance. Like we can achieve the maximum bulk modulus, the shear modulus, or zero thermal expansion coefficient, or negative pulse ratio, to reach their theoretic bounds. That's the new numerical method that so give us a wide variety of freedom and flexibility design the different macrostructures, they have the different effective properties. That's the benefit we use in multiple methods. Okay? That's actually topological optimization is essentially a zero and one integral program method. That's about the large scale design optimization problems with discrete design variables. Those large scale design optimization normally Faced with MP hard issue or compilation, you know, very difficult to do computation, straightforward to use discrete design variables due to the MP hard issue. So, constant, all the different topological optimization methods are trying to answer the same question How can I find the solution for the super large scale design optimization problems? But they only have two kinds of design variables. If one port in space with the material, that's one. It's without material, that's zero. In this case, we have some typical method, like a simple method, ESO method, evolutionary structure optimization method, level set method. All of those methods are trying to answer, resolve these questions. Large scale discretized variable based design optimization. MP hard issue, we need to find a way to apply gradient based optimization method to find the solution.
find this solution. We try to award the OP hard issue. Okay, so this is a live set is such of those methods. So my design will dominate based on live set method. Live set method. I will not talk the details about the design method, but uh, another numeric scheme involved is homogenization method. Because I'm talking about macrostructure, periodical macrostructure. How can we evaluate the effective properties of a macrostructure for periodical conflicts? That's numerical homogenization method. Numerical homogenization method, we can extract effective properties, like effective young modulus, effective buck modulus, effective post ratio for the macrostructure. So the effective, the word effective here to indicate we are talking about the property of the macrostructure, not the property of the base material. Such as I got a macrostructure with effective post ratio, negative post ratio, but their base material post ratio are still positive, like 0 0.3. Okay? So once we have those two methods, we are ready to design the pattern model materials. Because of the Astrotropic pattern model materials, well, uh, they actually, all those two mechanical quantities can be transferred to effectively also ratio close to zero point five. In this way, our design objective function will be defined as to make the macrostructure effective post ratio close to zero point five as much as possible, but no more than the up the up limit because. Uh, Finally, we have a solid structure rather than fluidics. That's a long way for us to over zero point five, very much exactly to zero point five, but less than that, less than that. So this is a, um, about the, the theoretical aspect to define our objective function and uh, to formulate our design constraints. Okay, so this is about, it looks like uh, symmetrical conditions, isotropic conditions, we need to engage those two conditions in our optimization formulation. Yeah, when we substitute the post ratio just modules inside, we will have a, a same matrix looks like that. Looks like that. So this same matrix actually we can find its theoretical equal value, and equal values. So this matrix will have five equal values are zero. Only one is not zero. That's exact bit the definition of pattern model material. So in this way, we can find the bulk modulus, the shear modulus, the ratio of bulk modulus over shear modulus is a very, very large value. That's the dominant characteristics of features of pattern model, solid state pattern model materials, pattern model material. In this way, we can run straightforward and develop our optimized formulation. That's all objective function, make the macrostructure effective post ratio close to 0 0.5, yet subject to, you know, uh, symmetrical conditions and isotropic conditions. Because the material with effective post ratio close to 0 0.5 are limited. But the one we are looking for, like, all need to satisfy this objective first, then the constraint must be satisfied. That must be satisfied. We are looking at a model material with negative post ratio close to 0 0.5 rather than other materials. Okay. After that, that's a numerical process. We will have an initial design that's matched by 115, by 115, 115 elements. This is a lot of elements. Yes. Also, we can do 500 by 500 by 500. Okay. That's the initial design. Then, after topological optimization of the fact animal analysis, oh, we have a topological design. Look like that. Look like that. This is structure. This effective, you know, elasticity matrix looks like that. We double check angle values of this matrix. We can find the five of very, very close, smaller, close to zero, but Y is low. The fact modulus and the shear modulus ratio is 100. This is still a big value. That's given us a very good path model behavior. Path model behavior. The effective post ratio is 0 0.485, smaller than 0 0.5, but close to that. But um, then 
where you, where you use to do a second state, state optimization, like a size optimization, we can extract, you know, a skeleton from topological design, we then do size optimization to find the size of the model materials. This is a, the new pattern model material size optimization we use as software. We gave the trust structure the different cross section areas. We have a look at the pattern model areas. They report four millimeter too large. The pattern model behavior is not good. If we reduce the geometric dimension, cross section areas, they report three, that's they report one half to nine. They report four double eight. By a little bit better. If we reduce to the report two millimeter, that's again much better. If we reduce to the report one millimeter, that's much much better. Because the current documentation papers, they achieved the value five hundred, but we achieved six hundred over six hundred. The post the effective post ratio close to the report four nine eight, very close to the report five. This is a, a design with very, very good pattern model properties. Pattern model properties. That's, uh, you know, all the geometric dimension. We based on topological design. They apply size optimization. We got the different designs, a range of different designs. They have different geometric dimensions. As I mentioned, pattern model material, their property is determined by geometric dimensions. Okay, different geometric dimensions give them different properties. Uh, once we have the topological design, the rest is how to protect that, how to do property characterization. In this presentation, we use like a selective laser methodology additive manufacture to protect our optimized design. Because this design is additive manufacture is also very challenging because the size is very small. Also, the material is also super lightweight. We only have around 5% material to design a three-dimensional microstructure. How to use additive manufacturing to manufacture that? That's also challenging. Because when we're doing additive manufacturing, we, we find, we find, uh, uh, sorry, we find some, you know, over half trust is everywhere because this is our public structure. It doesn't matter which direction they will have over half struts. That's the trend to add it to manufacture. But finally, we find a way to use a lot of it alloy with the mechanism. This is a cheap lot of it alloy material. We do not use it to use a self support. Use the support structure, but the point of bed will give a very good support. In this way, we can design the three dimensional microstructure free of support. That's a very good aspect. We try to use titanium, but titanium doesn't make sense because the density is high. Point of bed can't support that. So, those at topological optimal design give us a lot of flexibility. Very, very good performance, a rich, a wide range of effective performance, extraordinary properties. But manufacturing is still a challenge, even if we have additive manufacturing technology today. So, that's a reason to our recent design. We use a different topological optimization method based on ground structure to design a different pattern model metal material. This is not isotropic pattern model material. It is all tropical pattern model, metal materials. Where additive manufacture is still ongoing. We didn't get a very good result, not yet, not yet, because as I mentioned, additive manufacture for such large composite structure is challenging. Is challenging. Uh, this is uh, because of material properties, experimental tests are still ongoing. Our will not show it. Maybe in the future we find a better opportunity to communicate. Uh, this is a uh, the all the presentation of my recent research today. We comes we close the, by talking today with conclusions. Because this is the first time we use a numerical design methodology to achieve three-dimensional solid pattern model materials. 
using topological optimization methodology. They, before that, nobody has done that. Also, the three-dimensional solid map structure with effective post ratio they provide. They can be used to mimic the traditional model material behaviors. They are very hard to compression, but easy to save to subtract the state information. Because the two different uh, you know, modules are coupled. The same modulus, but modulus are uncoupled. So also those microstructures, they are super lightweight, but high performance. So they can implement extremely high stiffness or stress. Also extremely high, you know, like a modulus, is extremely uh, high property to withstand thermal loading or thermal shocking like that. So this is the benefit we can design soup large weight three dimensional large complete structure, but we can achieve a broad range of new property, lower properties. That's a traditional materials, chemical composition is quite hard, challenging at least, because you can't achieve a range of material properties. But design optimization, they are elaborate design methodology. They based on fine animal analysis. We treat parameter will help you kind of materials. Okay, that's my seminar presentation. Thank you so much.